Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, Windows 11 works on what? This new chip can beat an RTX 3080, the 12900K gets overclocked, and Nvidia's doing this crap again? Okay, it's news time, ma'am. First up for today, Windows 11 has been a really confusing launch. From changing hardware requirements multiple times to excluding CPUs that are just a few years old. Of course, they allow you to install it on unsupported hardware, but they don't promise updates. Well, one user on Twitter actually got the operating system installed on a pretty old CPU. And by old, I mean a single core Pentium 4 661 from all the way back in 2006. Now, it does have hyperthreading, so it's got a whopping two threads, but basically, Windows 11 can run on some pretty old hardware. Of course, that isn't to say anyone should do that. There are certain requirements so all of Windows 11 features can work, and a single core CPU has to be unbearably slow. But the issue I have with Microsoft's requirements is that it all seems arbitrary. I mean, an 8 core 16 thread CPU isn't compatible, but a 4 core i7 mobile part is? And speaking of 7th gen Intel, that 4 core works, but the 7700K doesn't? Right. You know it's because your Surface Studio 2 comes with it. Oh well, I guess. Maybe Microsoft won't actually stop sending updates to unsupported hardware. But first, if you're looking for a top-of-the-line custom gaming PC that's hand-built by a professional, look no further than today's sponsor. Digital Storm. The veteran PC builders with over 20 years of experience, and it shows. From the emails they send documenting each stage of the build process to the seriously impressive packaging, Digital Storm knows what they're doing. Plus, they offer a ton of options for every enthusiast, from custom water cooling to even sleeved cables, and it's basically just plug and play. Digital Storm installs everything you need and tests it all out before shipping. Oh, and every build comes with life time support, one year parts warranty, and three years labor. So take the guesswork out of PC building by visiting the link in the description below. Next up, Apple just unveiled two new monster chips, and they're actually claiming that one can beat NVIDIA's RTX 3080. That's right, Apple recently added two new in-house processors to their M1 lineup the M1 Pro and M1 Max, and they're set to power the company's new MacBook Pros. As for specs, the M1 Pro comes with either an 8 or 10 core CPU, a 14 or 16 core GPU, and 32 gigabytes of memory. The M1 Max, on the other hand, comes with a 10 core CPU, 24 or 32 core GPU, and 64 gigabytes of memory. According to Apple, the 10 core CPU is up to 70% faster than the M1, but the interesting part isn't the CPU. It's the GPU. The M1 Pro is up to two times faster than the M1, while the M1 Max is up to a whopping four times faster. And get this, Apple claims that the M1 Max can actually beat NVIDIA's Notebook 3080, specifically that it can get close to the performance while using 100 watts less power, and that the 3080 is 3.3 times slower than the M1 when running off the battery, at least with these notebooks. Ultimately, Apple's upcoming chips are looking to be a huge improvement over the original M1, but unfortunately for gamers, that doesn't help much given they're only on Macs. Next up for today, it looks like Intel's 12th gen CPUs are just as power hungry as past generations. Of course, they do have far more cores, but efficiency is kind of the point of efficiency cores. Either way, the story originally comes from a leaker on Billy Billy and later published by Video Cards. And in the post, the user actually overclocked the 12900K, which is of course the highest in part at 16 cores and 24 threads. According to him, he was able to get the P cores to 5.2 GHz, yet kept the E cores at stock with a voltage of 1.385. And with that, the 12900K actually consumed a whopping 330 watts. And of course, yes, it has more cores, but for reference, AMD's 16-core 5950X doesn't get past 183 watts when using Precision Boost Overdrive. With that said, Intel's 12900K did beat the 5950X at both single and multi-threaded scores in CPU-Z, though it just barely won at multi-threading. 
Really, I think the main thing for Intel's 12th gen will be price. As long as the 12900K can stay around the same price as their last gen, it could be a huge win, even when AMD launches their Ryzen 3D parts. Then again, AMD could lower prices as well, and that's obviously why competition is a good thing. And speaking of competition, it looks like Nvidia doesn't want any with today's final story. This one comes from Moore's Law is Dead, and it's a little old at this point, but I think it's really important to discuss. Basically, it looks like Nvidia is trying to strong arm AIB partners yet again. If you remember the whole GeForce Partner Programmer GPP fiasco a little while back, where it seemed like Nvidia was giving partners incentives to only use their gaming brands for Nvidia. This time, instead of targeting AMD, they're pushing against Intel. The story was originally alluded to in an article from Igor's Lab and later confirmed by Moore's Law is Dead. And according to Moore's Law is Dead, who allegedly spoke with multiple AIB partners, Nvidia is pushing them to make Nvidia look more premium over Intel. I'm talking stuff like not using their high-end shrouds for Intel Arc, etc. Going as far as allegedly threatening them with affecting shipments if they don't comply. I mean, we're talking mobster-style tactics here. The difference is that Nvidia allegedly isn't writing it down now. Meaning, unlike their partner program where it made their tactics much more clear, Nvidia is just discussing it in meetings. To which they've apparently had multiple meetings with AIB partners where this is alluded to. And the entire goal is to make Nvidia appear more more like the premium option, whether that ends up being the case or not. And they're supposedly doing this because Nvidia is worried that Intel's name in the industry could sway customers. And of course, that's an understandable fear. Intel is certainly a huge name in PCs, but that's no excuse. If this is true, all I can say is... Shame! So while that does it for today, what do you think about Nvidia's supposed tactics? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!